In this video, we're gonna look at the representation of whole numbers in different bases. And you can actually do this with non-whole numbers as well, but we're just gonna do it with whole numbers. So let's look at the pre precise definition, which is a little bit tricky to deal with, but we'll look at a ton of examples that'll make it clearer. So a base n representation of a number x is a way of writing x as d dk, dk minus one, all the way down to d2, d1, d0, and then you put a subscript here in, that means the base n representation, and these numbers are the digits of this base n representation. And in base 10, x can be represented in the following way. It's dk times n to the k plus dk minus 1 times n to the k minus 1 all the way down to d2 times n squared, d1 times n to the first power, and then d0 times n to the 0 power, but n to the 0 power is just 1. And furthermore, these digits, these di's, are between 0 and n minus 1. So um, the first example I want to look at is just the fact that our normal base 10 representation is actually set up for this already. Let's look at maybe the number 3,259. So notice we could write this as 3,000 plus 200 plus 50 plus 9. And each of those um, are built in this form uh, here. So for instance, this first part, this thousandths place is 3 times 10 cubed. Then this hundredths place is 2 times 10 squared. And then we have 5 times 10 to the 1. And then plus 9 times 10 to the 0. Great. And so this is a good way of looking at a number that we already know about um, in a base that we already understand and then writing it kind of in this more formal way. So uh, for our next example, let's consider a base 3 number. Um, and let's consider uh, the number uh, 1202. And I'll put a little 3 here to indicate that we're in base three, and our goal is to translate this to base 10. So this is not 1,202. That would be what we would say in base 10. This is uh, 1202 in base three. So uh, let's see what we've got here. So notice here we have the three to the zero spot, the three to the one spot, the three squared spot, and the three cubed spot. Just like here we had the 10 to the zero, 10 to the one, 10 squared, and 10 cubed. So we have one times three cubed, so that would be that spot, plus two times three squared, that would be that spot, plus zero times three to the first, and then plus two times three to the zero. Great. So that's how we have all of those. But now we can just uh, add this together just like normal. So 3 cubed is 27. So we have 27 plus, so 2 times 3 squared is 2 times 9, which is 18, plus 2 from this last one. Great. So now notice if you add all of these together, you're going to get this thing as clearly uh, 47. Okay, good. So let's do another example like this real quick. So let's maybe do uh, 1001100 zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, and let's say this is uh, base 2. So base 2 is really important in computer science and computation. Computers work in base 2. And so here we have the 2 to the 0 spot, the 2 to the 1, 2 squared, 2 cubed, 2 to the 4th, uh, 5th, and 6th. So that means this is 1 times 2 to the 6th. That would be like this spot. And then plus 0 times 2 to the 5th plus 0 times 2 to the 4th. That would be this spot and this spot. And then we have plus 1 times 2 cubed plus 1 times 2 squared. That would be these two spots. And then 0, 2 to the 1st and 0, 2 to the 0. So this would be plus 0, 2 to the 1st plus 0 times 2 to the 0. Okay, fantastic. So you can easily check that 2 to the 6th is 64. Notice 2 cubed is 8, but 2 to the 6th is going to be 8 squared, so that's 64. So here we have 64 from this guy right here, then a couple of zeros, and then plus 8 from this one right here, and then finally a plus 4 from this one right here. So notice we've got 64 plus 8 plus 4, so that's going to give us 76.
Okay, good. So I'll erase the board and then we'll do a couple more examples like this. Okay, so for our next example, we want to look at 4, 3, 1, 2, and that's in base 5. So here's our 5 to the 0, 5 to the 1, 5 squared, and 5 cubed spot. So this is going to be 4 times 5 cubed plus 3 times 5 squared plus 1 times 5 to the first power plus 2 times 5 to the 0 power. Okay. Now we can just do this calculation. So that's four times uh, five cubed is 125. And then we have three, five squared is 25 plus five plus two. Okay, fantastic. Now four times 125 is the same thing as two times 250. So that's gonna give us 500 plus, so that's 75 plus 5 plus 2, so that's uh, clearly 582. So that's what we get if we convert this from base 5 to base 10. Okay, now what about converting the other way from base 10 to some other base? So uh, let's convert the following number, which I'll write in base 10, into base 3. So let's say we have 59. So there's a really technical way to do this involving logarithms and the floor function, but we're not really going to worry about that. We're just going to kind of guess and check. And so um, let's say we're trying to go here to base 3. So I would say maybe a good first step to do is to write a couple of powers of 3 until you find one that is bigger than whatever your goal number is. So in this case, that's 59. So we have 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the 1 is 3. 3 squared is uh, 9. 3 cubed is 27. 3 to the 4th is 81. Notice we have found a number which is bigger than our 59, which means we're only going to need these three, these four powers of three. And so we want to decompose 59 into parts that look like 27, 9, 3, and 1. And so notice we can write this as 54, which that's 27 times 2, which we'll write in just a second, and then plus uh, 5. Great. And then furthermore, 5 can be written as 3 plus 2, and that's important to do because 5 is in between this first power of 3 and the second power of 3, so we've got to pull out a first power of 3. Okay, great. Now the next thing that we can do is write 54 as 2 times 27, but 27 is 3 cubed. And notice we have plus 0 times 3 squared, so we've got nothing in this 3 squared spot. And then we have plus 1 times 3 to the 1, that would be like this term, plus 2 times 3 to the 0, that would be like this 1's term. Now we can put this all together, that makes this thing 2, 0, 1, 2, base 3. Okay, great. So uh, I'll go ahead and clean up the board, then we'll do one more conversion in this direction. Okay, for our next example, we're going to convert the number 120 into base 4. So we're going to start off with the same strategy that we had before, and that is we're going to write some powers of 4 until we achieve a number bigger than 120 and use that to decompose our 120 um, as appropriate. So we have 4 to the 0 is 1, 4 squared is 16, 4 cubed is equal to 64, and then 4 to the 4th, so that's going to be 64 times 4, and that's going to be uh, 256. So that means we don't need a 4 to the 4th, because that's larger than 120. We just need these. And now what we'll do is we'll pull out descending powers of 4 until we've run out. So notice... 120, we can write that as 64, but only a single 64, so not 2 times 64, because 2 times 64 would be 128, that's too big. But then what we're left with is some uh, powers, or some copies of 16, and in fact what we can have here is uh, 16 times 3, so you can check that that's what you need. And then uh, what's left over is uh, 2 times 4. 
So this is probably just best done just by messing around with it. Um, there's nothing really fancy going on here. But now notice that this is 1 times 4 cubed plus 3 times 4 squared plus 2 times 4 to the 1 plus 0 times 4 to the 0. So that's what we get if we write all those as powers of 4. But now I'm putting it into base 4 notation. That's going to be 1, 3, 2, 0, base 4. Because this is our 4 to the 3rd spot, our 4 squared spot, our 4 to the 1st, and our 4 to the 0 spot. Okay, great. I'm going to clean up the board, and then we're going to look at a base 20 number system that the Mayans used. Okay, now we're going to look at this really interesting number system used by the Mayans, and it is base 20. So since it's base 20, we need 20 different symbols to represent the numbers between 0 and 19. So I've written the symbols over here. So notice 0 kind of has its own special symbol, which is drawn like that. Forgive the drawing. You can just Google a uh, Mayan number system if you're psyched, and you can see maybe a bit bigger a better picture of what zero looks like. And then after that, everything is dominated by these lines and dots. So one is represented by one dot, two by two, three by three, and four by four dots. And then for five, instead of having five dots, you have one line. And then after that, for the numbers six through nine, you just put dots over the line to add to that five. So for instance, 8 is a line and then 3 dots. So the line is like 5 plus 3 is 8. And now you continue on with that, um, adding two lines for the number 10, and then dots above it to add the numbers 11 through 14. So notice 14 is two, do two lines and four dots. And then three lines for the number 15, and so on and so forth. Now the important part about this is that the numbers are written vertically. And so here you would have the first digit of the number and the second digit of a number. Down here you would have the first, second, and third digit of a number. Okay, so now what our goal is, is to write this in base 10. So we're going to do that for both of these examples. So what we need to realize is that we're working from the bottom to the top. So this one on the bottom is like the 20 to the 0 place. And this guy on the top is like the 20 to the 1st place. So whatever number you have right here is going to be multiplied by 20 to the first power when you translate it into base 10, and whatever number you have right here will be multiplied by 20 to the zeroth power. Okay, so uh, let's see what we get for that. So what that tells us is that this is going to be equal to 3 times 20 to the first. That's what this first row says. And then the second row says, well, let's see, that's 13. So plus 13 times 20 to the 0. But 3 times 20, that's easy. That's 60. Plus, so 13 times 1 is 13. So this represents the number 73. So uh, now let's go ahead and do this one. So the same rules apply, working from the bottom to the top. This is the 20 to the 0 space. This is the 20 to the 1 space. This is 20 to the 2 space. So notice, this number right here represents the number 17. See, it's right here. It has three lines and two dots. So that means we have 17 in the 20 to the 2 space. And then we have 0 in the 20 to the 1 space. That's what this uh, digit represents. And then we have, that's 9 in the 20 to the 0 space. Great. Great. And so now we've just got a little bit of a calculation to do. So notice that is going to be 17 times 400. So 20 squared is obviously 400. And then we're going to have plus that 0 plus 9. 17 times 400 is 6,800. So we have 6,800 plus 9. So the final answer is uh, 6,809. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we're going to do another couple of examples of this. For our next example, we'll look at this. So notice here we have these three dots in the 20 to the 0 spot, 20 squared spot. And then we have uh, this number in the 20 to the 1st spot and this number in the 20 to the 0 spot. So notice these three dots represent 3, so that tells us that this is equal to 3 times 20 squared 
And then the this configuration of symbols represents the number 18. So that's plus 18 times 20 to the first power. And then finally, plus 2 times 20 to the 0 power. Okay, so now putting this all together, notice that uh, 20 squared is uh, 400 times 3 is 1,200 plus 18 times 20. So notice like 18 times 2 is 36, and then we're going to multiply by that, that by 10. So that's going to give us 360 and then plus 2. So we get something like that. And so notice uh, this all adds up together to give us uh, 1,562. Okay, so um, I'm going to erase the board and then we're going to do the translation in the opposite direction. So our goal now is to write this number, 8,960 in Mayan numerals. And so the first thing to do is maybe just to write it in a base 20 notation with our numbers and then translate this into uh, the Mayan numerals. So notice that uh, we can do the same thing that we did before, which is make a list of powers of 20 to see how far we need to go. So we have 20 to the 0 is equal to 1, 20 to the 1 is equal to 20, 20 squared is 400 and then also 20 cubed is 8,000. So that means that we're going to need up to 20 cubed. So let's see if we can decompose this into these powers of 20. So notice this is going to be 8,000 plus 960. So there we've taken out a 20 cubed. Now let's see what we can do with this 960. So now uh, we can take this and write it as 8,000. Then we want to decompose the 960. Notice we, we can decompose it with two 400s. So we'll write that as 2 times 400 which is 800 and that leaves us an additional 160 left over. Then we can take that 160 and write it as 8 times 20. So let's see what we have. We have 8,000 plus 2 times 400 plus 8 times 20. But each of these numbers which I'm underlining are all powers of 20. So we can write this as 1 times 20 cubed plus 2 times 20 squared plus 8 times 20 to the first plus 0 times 20 to the 0 because we need that last guy in there as well. Okay, so that means in base 20, this is 8, sorry, 1, 2, 8, 0, but then writing that in um, Mayan notation, we go from the top to the bottom, so we'll have 1, and then 2 for this, and then 8 is a line with 3 dots, so that would be that one, and then 0 is uh, this symbol right here. Great. So that would be the Mayan numeral for 8,960. Okay, so I think this is a good place to end the video.